everything is serving the song. Whatever you do must serve the song, whatever it is. And one of the principles that we had with 10CC, which I thought was great, whoever was best for the job would get the job. So with vocals, say, you know, we'd maybe all try out because we all fancied singing this song. But we used to have a little sign in the studio that went, next. <laughs> so there was no, dis we didn't have to talk about it. You're not good enough to go out. <laughs> Now you enjoyed commercial success with 10CC's first record. Um, yeah. How was that for the? How did that affect the band? That right out of the box you had a hit record. Oh, it was brilliant. We mm. we kind of didn't. I think what was great about it was that we didn't actually expect anything. Mm. So, the first record that we had out in 1972 was called Donna, which was going to be the B-side for a song that Eric Stewart and I wrote. Okay. That, that song was called Waterfall. So we thought, well, we're, you know, being very democratic. Eric and I had written the A-side. Kevin Lulsh would write the B-side. And they came up with Donna. But as, as soon as we pretty much started recording it, we knew there was something really good going on. And um, we got the record to uh, Jonathan King, who just started a record label called uh, UK Records. Mm. And he put it out, and bang, that was it. Now, 10CC were at the forefront of what was developing now as album rock. It wasn't just singles anymore. Um, mm -hmm. How did that affect your writing? Because does that give you more freedom? Absolutely. Does everything has to be a three-minute hit single? It completely yeah. changed. Uh, it was like being let loose in a candy store, so to speak. <laughs> you know, we, we could do anything we wanted. Also, it was our own studio. Eric was an engineer. A lot of the time, there were only the four of us in the actual studio itself. I think that to contribute to the kind of freedom we felt. There was no, the only opinions being given were from the band. There was no one else to go to and say, well, what do you think? It was just us. Um, and yes, because all we did was, we wanted to just make ourselves happy. So we weren't bothered about being commercial. We weren't, I mean, we were obviously hearing other stuff and listening to people like, I don't know, the band, uh, Steely Dan, just very good quality stuff that we'd always listen to anyway. And it all kind of came out. And we, we also had different influences, you know, whereas I was more on the Bacharach side of things. Kevin Lowell were more sort of like Jacques Brel or more avant-garde. Eric was more sort of bluesy, rock and rolly, if you like. So this coming together, happened to work. I mean, it might not have done, who knows, you know, but there was just a great chemistry between us. One of the things, when I first heard 10CC, I had never heard records like that before. You were also at the forefront of recording technology, which was rapidly advancing. Well, we had this principle of, uh, because there were no constraints on us, we, which was very, very lucky to have that, not have any constraints. We could do what we want in the studio, you know, I mean, we, we'd think of a sound and then we'd have to create it. And that was part of the joy was trying to create it. Whereas now we go, uh, we want a, a choir. There's a you know, sample bunk. If we wanted a choir, we had to record the choir and develop a technique for turning four of us into 200 of, of us, mm. which we did. Um, on, on I'm Not In Love, uh, it, there's a, a very good example of that. So it was a matter of finding different ways of miking the piano or sticking uh, a, a microphone onto the bass mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, rather than less playing and, and, and maybe mixing it with going through an amp or going direct right. into the board but just something to like make it a little bit different. Now um, when you look back on your 10cc career what what are some of the records you treasure the most or what are some of the ones that really stand out? Um, I think the uh, I think my favorite album is uh, Sheet Music which was our second album. Right. I also love the first album as well. There's some really funny... I, I remember it being both artistically satisfying and a lot of fun to make. You know, just sitting down and listening to, you know, Kevin Lowell come out with a song, because what would happen is they'd play it, the song to us, or Erica and I would play it to them, or whoever the combination of songwriters was. And the, the one other good uh, principle that we employed was whoever wrote a song we never said, it's crap, we're not doing it. I don't want to do it. Mm. That never happened. It was like, if you think it's good enough, we'll do it then. But allow me to uh, make some suggestions. <laughs> and that was how it worked. So 
whoever wrote the song, it was adopted by the four of us as our own. Mm. And that's how it worked, and it worked brilliantly. Nice. What does the future hold for Graham Gould? Well, I'm just finishing up a, a, a new solo album. Oh, okay. Tell uh, us about it. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very eclectic mix of songs. There's no theme. I've just been going through it's kind of like a writing spurt mm -hmm. this year. Um, one of the songs is about being on the road with Ringo. Oh, okay. And uh, I've got a few special people on it, but I'm not going to say who they might be but maybe you could work that out <laughs> on the album. Um, and uh, I'm really pleased with it. And it's really taken up a lot of my time this year. I st still have a, I still tour with 10CC. I'm the only original yeah. member, but two of the boys, Rick Fenn and Paul Burgess, um, joined the sort of what I call Mark II 10CC after Kevin and Lowell right. left, they joined in 76. They're with right. me yeah. and I've got great other musicians with me as well. And it's actually, Next year is turning out to be probably the busiest year we've ever had. Well, one so. of the things, so Tom has been scouring the world for albums from all the people we've interviewed. Any, any comment on some of these records that Tom has behind Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, that is a terrible picture. <laughs> it really <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. Just ask you about it. Thank that's you for that. One. That's yeah. the one we like. Uh, the that, that's a better one with the Rickenbacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Um, yeah, you know, the things you do for love, you know, when you, <laughs> promotion and things. But I, I, I don't know how that one got through. But anyway, <laughs> there it is. It's very memorable for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to keep going through it? Sure. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Uh, Bloody Taurus, which was, I thought, the last good album that we did, uh, which has um, Dreadlock Holiday on it, uh, which is still... Um, you know, does very well for us with uh, mm -hmm. cricket. You know, it's, it's 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 on the radio quite a lot because you know, Cricket Australia used it um, use it for their World Series. Uh, I'm just trying to think what else there is in it. There's a song here. No one's ever written a song that has Rochdale in it. I used to live near Rochdale, and that's how that song came about. Um, yeah, so a great album, I think. Very did, good. You, did you have input into the design of the album covers at all? Or? Yes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, both this album cover and How Dare You album cover and the original soundtrack also were done by Hypnosis, right, hypnosis yeah. um, and uh, the late Storm Ferguson. Right. I'm still working with them. They're now called Storm Studios, right. but their ideas seem to fit in with the music that mm -hmm. 10CC uh, wrote and, and the music that I'm writing as well. There's some kind of connection. Uh, they reflect in pictures what I'm trying to do in sound. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's one idea, yeah. but it, there's a general vibe about of creativity and something different and interesting and mysterious sometimes. Mm. That's a great cover. Mm. <laughs> All right, great. Okay. Explain the myth of how the name 10CC came. Oh, uh, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs>